Hello again. In this tutorial, we're going to cover long exposure astrophotography using SharpCap. Now, for this example, we're going to assume that you're using a USB to serial adapter for your long exposure control. Now, once you've installed your adapter and you've got your drivers installed, there's just a little bit you need to do in the background. And what you need to do is go into Device Manager and scroll down Device Manager until you find Ports, COM and LPT. Click the plus at the side of Ports and you will see your adapter is listed. It will usually say something similar to this and then at the end it will have a COM number in brackets. In this case it says COM7. Yours could be anything from 5 upwards. Just remember that number. The next thing you need to do is right click and click properties on that port. Look at port settings and scroll down these settings here because what you need to have is 9600, 8, non, 1 and none. If that's all OK then click OK and come out to device manager and you've done in there for the time being. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is to make a folder somewhere either on the desktop or wherever you want to to store your images into. Um, you know, just call it whatever you want, call it captures or sharp cap captures or you know whatever. So from the file menu then set capture folder and scroll through and find the folder that you created. For this example, I've created one called SharpCap Tutorial. So we select that and click OK. Next, we're going to go to Cameras. So click Cameras and you will see there are two cameras listed. One is for normal exposures. The second listing is for long exposures, LX mode. So select LX mode. You will get another window opens. Now then, this one, the important one, Comport. You use the number that you saw in Device Manager. So we had COM7, so you make sure that this one also says COM7. Now for exposure control line, you want RTS. Uh, amp off control line, use none. Shutter control line, use none. And these should be all blank. None of the invert boxes should be ticked. So there we are, click OK. Sharpcap will now take a second just to reevaluate itself and, and you know look at the settings and everything. You might find that you, your image in your preview screen has now shrunk, but don't worry about it because that's what we're going to cover next. Uh, next, go to options, click on options, and click on video capture filter. Now, in these settings, what we want is under general, we want flickerless image is off. Face tracking is off, digital zoom is off, picture enhancer is off. In picture, frame rate should be set at 10 frames per second. Auto exposure should be off. These can be ignored. Auto white balance needs to be on. Everything else down at this bottom end needs to be off. Audio, we, we're not interested in, we're not, we're not creating audio files so it doesn't matter. So once again, click OK. Next, go to Options again and click on Video Capture Pin, which is that one. And just check the frame rate, again, is at 10. Color Space Compression, that should be at YUY2, like so. Output Size should be 640 by 480. Click Apply and click OK. Again SharpCap will just re-evaluate its settings and now your screen size should have increased like this. OK. Next we go to Options again. Serial LX configuration. Just double check everything stayed the same. COM7, RTS, non, non, everything's unticked. Once again Wait for sharp cap to reevaluate its settings, and there we go, we've got a nice bigger picture. Now then, the next thing that we're going to want to do is to move over to this side and just double check your settings again that you're at Y2, 10 frames per second, 640 by 480. Now the exposure control is now a shutter speed control. So such as that, 
will be 0.2 seconds. Your gain you use as you normally would do in taking shorter exposures. Uh, as I've said before, I prefer to keep that at about 50% and just use it as a fine tuning. Uh, backlight compensation needs to be off. Colour enable needs to be all the way to the right. Gamma in the middle. Saturation, I like to just move it up a little bit, like so. Contrast and brightness, they can be left in the middle. Now, I'm just going to turn the lights off in here just to make it a little bit darker so that we can see what we're doing. Um, now, once you've got pointed at your deep sky object um, and you've got your gain at about sort of 50%, then you need to try upping your shutter speed until you start to get your actual object in view. Now, bear in mind that I'm in an office and it's quite light in here, the sun's shining and everything, so these will be whited out um, you know, on this one. Obviously, if you're outside, there's no sun and you'll just basically, you know, you're just increasing your exposure to up just how much you can see out there. Uh, eventually, you should start to see your object now, uh, as a start, I would say if you were a, if you were imaging the Orion Nebula, I would start off at about three seconds, and then mess about with your gain. And once you've messed about with your gain, you should start to see a colour picture of the Orion Nebula in your preview. Obviously, once you've done that and you and you've got a colour picture in there, then you need to click on Start Capture. Now, in Windows XP, you will get a box that looks like this. Uh, in Windows 7, I believe it doesn't quite do it the same. Now, for me, I select number of frames. And we're going to be wanting to look at, well, it depends. Um, for for Orion, where you're only on, on quite quick exposures, I actually would like to take about 100 to 150 frames, which, if you calculate that, it's, it's actually not a lot of time, really. Um, you know, and it's horses for courses. As you get to the harder objects where, you know, you're on one minute exposures or 70 second exposures, then experiment a little bit. Um, again, you know, maybe set it at 50 and go in and make yourself a cup of coffee or something because that's going to be 50 minutes. Uh, you know, it's quite time consuming. Uh, for a starter, you can, you can start taking, say, 10 frames and just see, you know, what, what, your, what your results come out like. And that's about it, really. That should set you well on the way to um, starting with your long exposure webcamming. And once again, thanks for watching.